Hello everybody, welcome back to Eva Resto. This here is Danish, our 1970 Volkswagen Beetle. And all of these parts here, wheels, suspension, brakes, are what we're gonna be fitting up in today's episode. So, welcome back, let's build a car. So yeah, as you might have noticed, it's bloody colorful this lot. All of what we do, all of our suspension gear is always done in this lovely satin black colour. And it looks great. We've got many kits here going all over the place to different people. Here and further past our kit as well. We usually build sort of six, seven, eight, nine, ten maybe kits at a time. All for different customers all over the world. Um, and powder coating's great because you can do black or you can do any colour you please. So we thought for our parts for Danish, let's go fully mad and let's just powder coat it toy town colours, you know, like red, we've got blue, we've got purple, we've got green and yellow, and it's all going underneath our car. So we're not gonna see it too obviously, but it is gonna make the process of building it all up a little bit more fun. And so if you watched our last episode on Danish, we stripped all of the suspension gear off entirely and left ourselves as sort of a perfect blank canvas to start putting all the new parts on. Um, it's all very sort of clean, but it's all very dank and dark and miserable. Um, so we're ready now to actually start putting some parts on. So all of this is going to start looking a lot more interesting very soon. I should probably talk at some point about wheels because we are massive wheel people here, you know. So we love our proper cool custom stuff, our rare stuff. And of course, you know, the stuff that always is going to work like Porsche Fox and that kind of stuff. But for this car, we went for something simple, easy, not expensive, but classically perfect. So we've gone for color coded smoothies. Uh, these are a wide five smoothie set with a five by two or five pattern like you'd find on like an earlier car. Um, no reason other than they just look cool. You know, um, four lug smoothies, you can get them off the shelf and that. I personally don't like, the, don't like the look of them too much. I prefer the sort of wide five stud pattern and the, the proper dome hubcaps you can get with VW logos in. So yeah, we're converting this to a early style stud pattern in the process of fitting these wheels. These are a four and a half at the front and a six in the rear. So a little bit wider in the rear, but not too far. You know, kind of a good fitment, but not a stupidly wide fat fitment. Um, Tyres wise, we've gone for a 145-65 on these fronts, which is sort of the complete go-to really, you know, like the, this is a tyre that's always gonna work on a slammed front end. It looks good, it's not too small, um, it's not too tall, it's not too wide. It gives sort of perfect clearance for everything really. And then in the rear, we've gone for a 195-65 which is a little bit bigger than what we'd usually fit. Um, this car isn't going, you know, we're not, we're not doing stupid, like we're not flat panning it, we're not engine raising it for now. So a big fat tire filling the arch a little bit better, also giving a slightly better cruise speed on the motorway is gonna be good for us. So we've got a proper classic, big and little tire choice on here, which I think is gonna look absolutely brilliant. Here's one of our usual premium rear kits, of course, done in the Toy Town color scheme. And again, the front end here, we've got a collection of parts all ready to assemble up and put on the car. We've got a four inch narrowed right hand drive beam. We've got our Zenith air shocks painted in this awesome metallic purple color. Uh, we've painted the original steering box as well. The original arms are in blasted and powder coated and the rest of it is all also just in silly colors. So we're gonna get that assembled up now and onto the car. brakes we're going to be running on the front for a wide five disc setup with these nice sort of vented and drilled discs well grooved and drilled discs um bought these off the mate second hand had the spindles powder coated as with the current color scheme and then just painted the calipers red and they're going to do nicely Just about finished assembling this lot up. Take a look at it, it's awesome. Today, we've got the beam on the floor over there. I'm gonna get Jesse, who's busy doing work like usual. Hello. <laughs> Come and help me fit that beam. 
because somebody had the great idea of building it all up on a bench and it's really, really heavy and now I can barely move it on my own, let alone lift it into a car and bolt it up. So, let's get that done. So before we put it on the car, we've got to take a few bits off. These track rods, just on there for show really, so I could take some cool pictures and that. These have got to come off. This can't actually fit into the car with those in the way. They won't go over it, so they've got to come off. Come off, yep. I've just got to put some rubbers on there. The ones that came off of the car were all right, so they'll go back on for now and they will be fine. So we're going to put this on now, get this on the car. It's a heavy old unit. Um, you could just put the beam on first and then fit all the stuff to the beam. That'd be the easy way to do it if you're on your own. Uh, but since I've got Jesse here to help me, we'll lift the whole unit on in one. Oh my God. Oh my. Oh. <laughs> yeah, this is way heavier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> Steering box, mate, I think it's in my way. Okay, back down again then. <laughs> Have I been put on the table first? <laughs> Fuck me, you, you two are... You're going to get demonetised as well. You two are right fucking useful. <laughs> <laughs> Take two. Let's actually try and get this thing on this time. <sighs> Took the steering box off because it was just in my way and causing all sorts of shit, so let's give this a go. Oh, God. That's fell off. <laughs> <laughs> What's it hitting? I don't know if it's in now. Don't know, mate. Oh, yeah, okay, that's in now. Bloody hell. That's in too. Yep, wrong one. Oh. oh I got you. <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just stand here and watch. <laughs> So that would have been much, much easier if we'd have just fitted the beam, fitted the arms, fitted the brakes. But no, for some reason I bench built it all first and then made it really difficult to fit in one go. So top marks. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. Beautiful. Cool. But wait until we get it on the floor for that bit. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Here we go. You need to take the on the wall. Oh. oh yeah, for pain. You have to clean with plate cleaner. What's the offset look like? Nice. Oh yeah. Mmm. I love it. <laughs> Look at the narrowness. <laughs> yes. Narrow. So what the people want. Can you lift it up? No, I can't. Airshot's got nothing in it. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll have to wait until it's on the floor for like the actual reveal. Yeah. Yeah. Back off. That's all kind of clean and nice now. I gave all this area a bit of a clean up and like wiped it. And you can see the colour of the car it used to be blue, lovely marina blue. And now it's red of some description. I don't know what the colour is, but it's it's lovely. It's a nice colour. I don't know what it is or supposed to be. Let's get track rods on. And then we can actually put a wheel on it, put some air on it, bro. slam that bad boy. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Look at it, it's purple. Beautiful. Fucking minging is what it is. But you like the purple. <laughs> <laughs> it is just leftover rally chopper purple. Some sort of rally chopper, I don't know which one. I think you're lying to me. This is your arse about face. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you being so? <laughs> there we go. Oh, I was going to say skill issue then. Oh, 
<laughs> Got them. So, little washer things. Is that a steering lock? Fuck. <laughs> Do this with two hands on one. Here we go. Sound. Hello. Socket. What I'm going to do for the car in the air, track rods on, connect some airlines and stuff up, obviously brake lines, stuff like that. I don't know, we can maybe do a bit of a test fit, put it on some blocks. No, <laughs> not yet, not that close. Got me fucking Welsh cakes now. Oh, give us one. <laughs> can I watch that bit back? <laughs> Steering box mounted um, oh, lock stop now. Lock tire on that. <laughs> Did I hang on? No, I didn't lock tire. That's just for crud at the box. That's what I mean, I was supposed to put lock tire on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, put that back in, pretend it didn't fall out. I won't actually show that because it, it's not very good. Okay. Yeah, it never fell out. <laughs> These are supposed to be glued in, but I didn't do it the other day. Um, are you going to put the awesome steering stopper on? Excellent. I'm going to put some steering rods on then. Excellent. This has gone from... Ow! Oh, this has gone from really professional. This is two idiots fucking about on a car. I don't know. Are we gonna do? Are we gonna get demonetized? I'm not gonna get. I'm not gonna get that YouTube money. I'm not gonna get my Lamborghini. I can't get any help. Think about the YouTube money. Think about the Lamborghini. Yeah, you know that YouTube money. Give us some fucking lock toys. <sighs> Hang on a minute. Oh, that's gonna be really hard to. <laughs> I put a strap lock right in the way. <laughs> Sorry. You're doing this on purpose, aren't you? This is the content people want to see. What, you will not? <laughs> <laughs> so much swearing of it, I don't think I can bleep it out anymore. There we go, look at that. What? Perfection. <laughs> what did you expect from me? I don't know. A dash of perfectionalism. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> cool. That's not in, in. Cool. Let's do death grip round two. Oh, I'm gonna squeeze it so hard. Oh, I'm not even exaggerating. You need to be that close. <laughs> this is how you properly apply Loctite. What is it? Loctite 565 pipe sealant. Low strength. Seems to work really good for us. If you don't want to get it in the ports, just on the threads. Mmm. I feel like I'm on a heart attack. <laughs> if you tow my way up here. <laughs> Oi! No bullying in the workplace. I'll get on to HR. <laughs> cool, that is uh, nipped up. That'll be good to go. Mmm, lovely. Sticky shit. <laughs> Put your discs on the wrong way. What's that? Put your discs on the wrong way. We're not having this argument again. <laughs> oh, I think that's the correct way. Sort of events. Imagine like a Porsche turbo twist wheel. Mm, like it a goes Porsche. that way. I just like it that way around. There you go. That's my excuse. Cool. <clears throat> Let's get some track rods on it then. <laughs> there we go. Oh yeah.
in the way. There we go. No steering. I mean, speedo cable back through. Mm. Nice slot wall. Yay. Nice. Stick that on me and put a cap on. Oh, yeah. Oh, it is bent. See, it's straight there. Oh, great. <laughs> so if I turn the wheel. It does like a little twirly yeah. jobby. Oh yeah. It, yeah, it's bent like fuck. Oh great. <laughs> yeah, it's probably straight. That makes sense. A little notch there, dead ahead of the steering box, which is nice. It means we're going to line it all at that height. I mean, it'll be perfect. We're tracking something like. And this one the same. It's way off. Break the pipes as well. Um, so, it's pretty much on, got a beam on, all bolted up, that's nice, steering gear on, mostly tightened up, a couple of little bits turned and adjusted so it's like sort of facing the right sort of way. Um, got a hook up with brakes, <clears throat> can't bleed those yet because we've got to do all the rears as well. Um, but we're that close to putting some wheels on it and testing it on the floor and seeing what it looks like. I need to go there now, do like a bit of a final bolt check, make sure we've been sort of tightened down, stuff that needs to be tightened down now anyway. This stuff was a bit more difficult to tighten up <clears throat> when it was on the bench because you've got nothing to sort of pull against. But on the car, obviously, you can tighten stuff up a little bit better. We go in, man, and just checking stuff, making sure everything's tight because as we've been doing this, we have been arsing around <laughs> and having a last fun. But you've got to make sure your car's actually built properly because, you know, if you don't, then bad things can happen. But before we do any of that, we're going to fit one of our new fuel filter bracket kits. This bolts to the side of the gearbox, holds the fuel filter for the engine, out of the way of any of the new air ride stuff that's being fitted. It's a no-brainer not to, while we've got such good access.
Here's our tank and dual compressors, which we're going to be running in Danish. Um, both of these are mounted down, the whole thing mounted down through one of our floater mounts, which is this piece here that bolts through the fuel tank laser that's already in the car. So underneath here, out of view, we've got most of the electricals that make the compressors work. We've got a 100 amp relay here, which actually feeds both of the compressors. So rather than having two relays, we've just got the one. Um, each of the compressors is individually fused though. And then the line that feeds this is gonna be fused on the battery end as well. So we're doubly safe there. There's not much to plug in once it goes in the car. We've kind of got to connect the main power line to this part here. And then both these compressors have their own earths. And then we've got to connect a positive and ignition live to the other side of this pressure switch. And of course, pipe this here in to our management underneath the dashboard. And that's it really. So from the top, it all looks very nice and neat. Exactly how we like it. And underneath, hidden out of the way, is all the stuff that makes it work. So one of the best things about these floater mounts is that you can build it all up off of a car, exactly like what you have done here, and then basically prepare it so that you can just bolt it in, wire it up, and then get about a business of finishing the rest of the car. So we've got this dropped in place, and you might notice a couple of things. It's hard to get to the wiring to connect it all up, and it's also hard to get to the wiring inside the car itself, should you ever need to check on any of the relays or connections up there. So, before bolting it in fully, you can just leave these front bolts in there, one per side, and the whole unit can sort of hinge forwards like that, and let that rest like so. And get to all your wiring stuff and of course get to the underside of this which aids greatly in actually getting it all connected back up again. So here's our gauge panel, which you've just seen me build up. This has got our gauges for the front and rear and the switches for all four corners. The back end looks complicated. But it's actually really simple. At the bottom here, you've got your in. That goes from your tank, splits two ways into four, that goes into the bottom of those switches. So that there is your in from the tank. And then these four on the top here, these are out to each corner. So you've got front left, front right, rear left, rear right. Each one of those comes out the paddle here, goes into a T-piece, so that of course you can read the height slash pressure you're at at the moment. We opted for a manual style management on this car with the four-way paddles and the twin needle gauges, just because it's simple and it's a little bit cheaper than the 3P kits. And in my opinion, it's a lot nicer to use on an older car as well. With manual like this, you've got more precise control. Yeah, it's a little bit slower and it isn't quite as cool to look at and it hasn't got cool features like Bluetooth and you know wirelessly and all that kind of stuff, but it's very simple and it works and that's why we like manual management. We also replaced these ripped axle gaiters and gave the car some fresh gearbox oil while we are at it. Oh, it's awkward. <laughs> the door's a wide five. That's nice one, isn't it? Oh. <laughs>
So guys, we now have a car on the floor. And we've got the tapping gators on there. We're setting all that up nice before the petrol tank goes in. Um, because it's so much easier to get to all the rods while it's all apart. Once that's done, tightened up, fuel tank in, let's go for a drive. So we're about four days deep in this project since the sort of first video we put where we started fitting all the new stuff up. Because in amongst doing this car, we have cars like this in at the same time, which is a razor edge carbon gear, full air suspension, a lot like what we're doing to the 70. Um, but that car requires a little bit more work. So the rear end is a few more modifications and stuff like that. But if we were on this start to finish, it'd probably take us about two to three days, something like that. It's been about four days since we started doing all the suspension stuff and fitting up all the new parts. I think we're ready. Hang on. Can you do it all at once or front and back? Uh, oh, I don't know. Do front and then back? Let's do the rear and rear. Yeah. Rear yeah. <laughs> that looks cool. Okay, right, let me go around. Cool. Yeah, drop the front, please, mate. <laughs> hmm. I don't think that looks bad, does it? Doesn't look bad. I think we need to see other hubcaps on. Is it on the floor? Yeah, awesome. <laughs> so I'll join you here from underneath Danish and I'm equipped with an angle grinder with a flat wheel on it because we dropped the car down last night. It looks great. And it lays on the floor, straight out of the box, which is great. More than you can ask for, really, you know, you should be happy with that. So this bit here, with the skid plate, lays on the floor, no problem at all. I want to try and get a little bit more out of it. So what I'm doing is I've just started to file down these lips at the front here. Don't want to go too far with these because it's where it's pinch welded together. But if we take a little bit more off of that, refit the skid plate, we get a little bit more drop out of it without actually sacrificing any of the lift or practicality or anything like that. So yeah, we're gonna carry on knocking this section down just a little bit, give us a little bit more drop. And of course, we could just take the skid plate off, but I don't like the idea of smacking this bit of the frame head on the floor, because it's very easy to damage, very difficult to repair properly. Um, so yeah, we're gonna tear it down a little bit further, stick the skid plate back on, car back on the floor, and see just if we can get a little bit more drop out of it. Also, top tip when fitting one of our skid plates, use a G clamp. Clamp it nice and tight to the frame head like that as you tighten it up. And it, I mean, there's no gap between the skid plate and the frame head. So ideally you want it sitting nice and tight against it.
it is guys, our 1970 Beetle. We've done the suspension, we've done the wheels, we've fixed a few little bits on the chassis, obviously service the engine, fuel lines, all the rest of it. And now it's ready to enjoy. Um, and I'm chuffed, it looks absolutely fantastic. It sits great. We've managed to pan the car all the way around so we don't really need it any lower than it is at the moment. And well, it drives brilliant, I'm really, really happy. We took it on the road a little bit so far, not done many miles in it but it feels smooth, it handles just like it did before as a stock car, although it handles, it's probably a little bit tighter, a little bit better to drive than before, but it's not ruined any of the practicality that I didn't want to take away from this car, because that's the whole thing with this car, is I love driving it, and I don't want to take any of that away from it, and at the moment, it feels absolutely brilliant. Looks like this, drives like a stock car, clears everything, I'm chuffed. So as with all our premium stuff, it's got a lot of lift, which is nice. So we could take it to pretty much stock height in the rear if we wanted to. And then not quite as high stock in the front, but still plenty of clearance to go over absolutely any obstacle you might come across. Cool. So I tend to drive it about sort of 40-ish PSI in the front and about 60-ish in the back. A little bit more pressure on the driver's side just to account for my weight. And there you have it, that's pretty much at ride height, as quick as that. Little sort of party trick, if you've got a suspension like ours, that can lift up a whole car with just two wheels, you can do this kind of thing. There you have it guys, there's stage one of our 1970 Beetle complete. You've seen how we do our full premium suspension on a car exactly like this and what goes into it. So what's next for this car? I'm not quite sure. I would like some heating though. So we're going to look at options for what we can do there to put like a more modern heating system in this car. Engine, let's do something fun there perhaps. Interior, loads of options to explore there. And what else? I'm not quite sure. We'll see as time goes on. Well, that's that for now. It's an enjoyable car. Very happy with how it's gone today. And um, thank you so much for watching. And uh, let us know in the comments if you think of anything we could do next to this car. It might be interesting to watch. So again, thank you very much and uh, see you next time. So, I slammed the car that I said when I bought I was going to leave stock. Any regrets? None whatsoever. <laughs>